invincible.
afternoon, thank you very much and welcome here to MW Hire O'More Park in Port Leash for a big day in the Glen Dimplex All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship. The group stages are done in the majority of competitions and it's knockout action from here until the 7th of August in Crow Park. We are here for the double header of quarterfinals and Intermediate Championship coming up later on at 4 o'clock, Kerry take on Meads but our first game thrown in at 1.30, Derry against Dublin. I'm Darren Kelly, joining me in the commentary box with both games, Elaine Aylwood and Elaine. After all the drama of Super Saturday last week with teams got knocked out, teams got in. Now it's down to knockout Camogie. Yeah, look across all the grades now we're down to knockout business and two teams will go home today. Your championship hopes over and two will go on to semi-finals in two weeks' time. So a massive weekend for the four teams that are still involved here. And look, the Intermediate Championship has been really, really competitive this year and similar enough to the Senior Championship in Group 1. There's been teams beating teams on any given day and it's been topsy-turvy as to who would go through and who wouldn't. But these are the four teams that are here today at quarter-final stage and a real chance now to get through to that semi-final form has been up and down but at the end of the day the team's got themselves here. We talk about Kerry and Mead later on but first let's talk about Derry and Dublin and of course we've Dublin here behind us now. Great progress from this year to make the knockout stages especially with a new and a very very young team. Yeah a very young team, very inexperienced but look huge experience in their manager and Jimmy Greville and knows what it takes to get to teams to, to knockout stages and indeed to win championships so huge experience there I suppose and he's bringing that confidence and look Dublin Camogie in general if you look at their seniors doing so well at the moment and a rising tide tends to lift all boats doesn't it and look the intermediate team are here today on Merit, as he says, some mixed results throughout the league campaigns but um, and the championship group but have found themselves here and look, they'll face stiff opposition from Derry today but they're here on Merit and will give themselves a good account of themselves. But it's an excellent point as well with the seniors doing so well, these will be the future seniors here you would imagine as well, many of them coming through their school of excellence under age two, they get a free shot at this today. Absolutely, look and that's what it is for Dublin, it's a chance to get a second team into a competition and when you have that second team what better to have, you know, 30 players on a senior panel, 30 players on an intermediate panel and all fighting for a position and trying to advance Dublin Camogie and look that's exactly I suppose the intermediate team here today won't be too concerned about what the seniors are doing but for the wider picture for Dublin Camogie it's certainly a massive achievement to have them here. On the other side plenty of experience in Derry, a lot of changes from 10 years ago but there is four players in this Derry team that won the whole Ireland final against Galway in 2012 too. They've been dark horses by many for this year's championship as well, they'll want to lay down a marker. Absolutely look and the form book will be with them coming into today's game you know a blip I suppose um, earlier in the year against Kilkenny where they were defeated down in Callan but other than that you know they've had a pretty impressive campaign and they've been quietly as you say going about their business and look Ulster Camogie similar to Dublin Camogie on the rise at the minute and I suppose they're looking at Down and Antrim in the senior championship and thinking why can't Derry be there and look they give themselves a real shot now to get to within two games of Croke Park today. And especially under Martin Coulter they've shown they only lost it down by a point in the Ulster Championship. A down in Antrim guaranteed their senior stars next year. It is a possibility that we could have three Ulster teams playing senior camogie in 2023. Absolutely and I have no doubt that that's a big motivation factor for this Derry team. As we said you know they've been down in the doldrums a little bit over the past couple of years maybe but quietly going about their work this year maybe not on everyone's radar at the start of the year but certainly I would imagine that seeing as I said their near neighbours down in Antrim up there in Senior Camogie and being competitive at Senior Camogie Derry will feel that they can be as competitive as both those teams so look this is their chance now to try and get back to a semi-final final and ultimately back to Senior Camogie. Well, we're looking forward to an exciting afternoon here in MW Hire O'More Park in Port Leash. Two quarterfinals. Who will join Galway and Cork in the semi finals? As we mentioned, Kerry and Mead coming up at four o'clock, but coming up shortly, it's Derry against Dublin, the first of the Glen Templex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie quarterfinals. And as you can see there now, the field of play, the referee for this game is Aaron Hogg from Clare with the two respective captains. So we see the throw in the moment, not a drop of wind, but there's a bit of a breeze actually, just spotting the flags, the far side of the field. Be favouring the team that goes to the right in the first half of lane. If you were there now having to decide, what would you pick? Uh, I think I'd probably play with whatever little bit of a breeze is in there. Um, and certainly if I was Derry, look, I think I'd probably want to get on top early. They probably are the, the favourites here today. So from a Derry point of view, I'd like to you know, build up a bit of a lead if I could. And from a Dublin point of view, maybe if you could get that win behind you in the first half and try and keep in the game for the first 15, 20 minutes. And look, sometimes it can take that for a game to settle. And often it's the team that actually plays against the win settles the quickest. So look, it's not it's not a huge win. It's not going to have a massive impact, I don't think, on the on the game. But obviously the heat is going to be you know, intense out there today. It's not 
outright sunny, but it is very, very warm, very heavy down there. It's so a it's typical going. Irish summer to stay. It's close, <laughs> it's sweaty, but it's not that hot. Yeah, muggy, I think, is the word you'd use for it if you, if you weren't on the weather forecast. But yeah, it is. It's going to be a tough 60 minutes for, for the four teams out there today. It's heavy going, but look, that's what they're here for. That's what that's gotten to this stage. So look, we haven't been accustomed to the sunshine over the last couple of weekends, but certainly it is going to be a warm one here in Port Leash today. Let's look at the two teams. We've Derry and Screens. So we have a look at them. A couple of changes from the side that was announced this morning in goal number one, Lee McQuillan. Full back line of two, Rebecca Kirkpatrick. Three is Megan Kerr and four, Sinead McGill. The half back line were number five, Rebecca Bradley. Centre back number six is Gwanya McNichol. And wearing number 17 coming back into the team is Maria Mooney. In midfield were number eight, Derva O'Kane. Partner were number nine, Quiva Glass. The half forward line, 10, Anya McAllister. 11, Mairead McNichol. And wearing number 18 is Maria Rafferty. And the inside line, Eva Shaw, number 13. The captain is Shannon O'Doherty at 14, while wearing number 15 is Shannon O'Connor. And Maria Mooney back into the team, a big move for them. Derry are well able to mix these players up as well, but we expect Maria Mooney to go in a fullback. Yeah, missed last weekend's game, I think, due to an exam. So you'd expect her to go back in, as you said, at fullback and, and Megan Carr maybe to, to fulfil a role, maybe a man marking role further out the field if required. But, you know, as you said, Derry, very versatile team. Had to dig into their panel over the last couple of weekends, have suffered a couple of long term injuries and even look, lost two, I think, last weekend in that win over Wexford. So they're both starting back today, Rebecca Bradley and Mairead McNichol, so both back in the team today. So look, from a dairy point of view, I suppose it's, it's good that they've been able to call on that panel, but ultimately you want to try and get those long-term injuries or those, you know, medium-term injuries, I suppose, back on the field to play as quickly as they can. Yeah, Derva McGucky and even Cassidy, Clean and Emrinon and Rachel Downey, four players that are absent today. Let's look at the Dublin team. A few changes from the side that was announced in goal for them, Dara Cook. Full-back line, where number 22 now is Emma Young. Full-back number 19 is Kira Clossy and four is Rachel Seary. The half-back line where number five is Ellen Baker. Centre-back number six is Siobhan Kyo and seven is Jennifer Moore. In midfield were number eight, Abby Ryan. Partnered by number 20, Erin Kennedy. The half-forward line, 10, Ellen Dunphy. 11, Sarah Finlan. And 12 is Kira Holland. And the inside line, top of the right, number 13, Sinead Daly. Full forward, number 14, Eva Deegan. And top of the left were number 15, Gronya Skelton. Six changes from their victory last week against Carlo. We're expecting positional switches from them as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, six changes in a week, I suppose. There's a lot of changes, but as you said, probably expecting a couple of positional ones here as well and we'll watch it as the teams line out maybe who picks up who all over the field but you know as we said a very young and inexperienced team maybe with Dublin but look I suppose often a team at this level and um, with that kind of lack of experience maybe is a bit of youthful abandonment they don't carry any fear into a game like saying they certainly won't fear Derry so you'd expect them to go at it from the start and as you mentioned you know Jimmy Greville obviously a hugely hugely experienced manager and, and knows what it takes to get teams to all Ireland finals so they won't be lacking for for um, experience on the sideline. No, Jimmy there just going through his notes talking to the players there. There's the match official Aaron Hogg in the middle with these umpires and lines people as well. It's Brian Kearney and Lisa Bannon will be the two on the line in this game. Of course, some people will have noticed that the Derry senior footballers are playing a big match in Crow Park at half five this evening, aiming to get to an All Ireland final for the first time since 1993. The last time they won an All Ireland semi final, they beat Dublin. Is that an omen for du Derry coming in today? But then, as Elaine said, this Dublin team, uh, youthful abandon, willing to hurl, good work being done by Jimmy Greville, Adrian O'Sullivan with the senior and all that and they'll go take them on. Yeah, absolutely. Look, they know that they're here on merit. They probably appreciate that they are the underdogs but often, you know, as I said, with a young team like that, t favourites, tags are, are the... the um, opposition that you're taking on don't mean anything to you. You're happy to just go out and try and hurl. And as I said, you know they're confident with their seniors now in a in a quarter final next weekend. So you know it's a huge time for Dublin Camogie and these girls will relish the opportunity and will try and seize it while they're there. So we're getting ready to go. It does look like Dublin are attacking the goal to the right in the first half. So the slight elements in their favour for the opening 30 minutes. Can they make it count? That is the question as everybody getting themselves in position now. This is the Glen Demplex All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship quarterfinal. The first of a double header we've live here today on the Camogie Association YouTube channel. Brought to you in association with Entry. Kerry against Mead up at four o'clock. Galway and Cork already in the semi-finals. And everybody getting themselves organised. And again, we can see the positional switches. Sarah Finlan and Kira Clossy in the midfield there for Dublin. We look at the Derry ones in a moment, but Aaron Hogg, the referee, getting ready to throw the ball in. The game is on, and the first knockout match of the Intermediate Kamogi Championship of 2022 is underway. Derry in possession. The winner free just outside their own 65 meter line. Look like Quiva Glass is the player that won that, and a chance for them to create the first scoring opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. One straight from the throw in there, and just looking at positional changes. Siobhan Kyo, number six on her back from Dublin, lined up in the half forward line there, but as soon as the ball was thrown in, headed back.
back towards her, her own goal, so she's obviously going to play as that spare defender back there for Dublin. Grania McNichol is the free taker, sent it down towards the inside line. Um, coming out to beat the ball there is Shannon O'Doherty. She started off the campaign this year in the half back line, but the captain is now in the attack and tries to make some ground there as well. Dublin's defender is getting away, brave enough, and it hit off the ground by Siobhan Kill, who played centre forward last week in their victory against Carlo. Dublin now chasing the possession through Kira, Kira Clossy out the far side of the field, and she sent it down uh, the pitch between the 265 year line. Grania McNichol, the experienced she brings to this dairy team will be vital today she takes the ball and sends it in towards the attack again another diagonal ball down trying to pick out one of the corner forwards Dublin out to meet it there first and excellently taken on the 45 meter line even if the slayer would not come up to the hands of Ellen Baker who wears number five this is Sarah Finlan Sarah Finlan on the move but she gives the ball away that might break kindly for Aoife Deegan not to be because Daryl Vaucane is there fighting for possession for Derry she's wearing the uh, blue helmet but uh, Dublin have the ball won back by Ellen Dunphy and Ellen Dunphy is now on the move here and the space is open up she might go for a score here but Ellen Dunphy Ellen Dunphy with the shot 90 seconds into the game and Dublin are off the mark Dublin one point Derry no score yeah and that's exactly I suppose the, the, the talk we had beforehand about having that you know that youthful experience and no no um, imposition on them happy to take on that run a great run from Ellen Dunphy broke the Derry cover and got a great shot away in a super score the goalkeeper for Derry is Neve McQuillan breaking into the team over the course of the campaign. Ball breaks kindly for Dublin again in the middle of the park. Hand pass off in the 65 meter line. Down in towards danger. And this is an opportunity now for the Metropolitans to build on their advantage. Another shot at the post. That's another score gone over the bar. Two points for Dublin. Two minutes gone. And a score coming there from Kira Holland. Yeah, another super score. And look, that seems to be the idea is get the ball into that two person full forward line in there as quickly as they can. And you know, it's called and Jerry a little bit of trouble at the minute so Dublin will want to capitalise this get as much ball into that full forward line as they can Kira Holland was one of the six changes made by Dublin she didn't start last week's game against Carlo even though she's their top scorer in the championship this year with 2-10 Dublin have a 13 different scores over their five games 30 different players definitely giving everybody in the squad an opportunity to stake a claim Anya McAllister with the pass down for Sinead McGill Sinead McGill outside the 20 meter line tries to give it back to Anya McAllister but this is good defending from Dublin and they're going to bring it out again uh, towards the uh, 45 meter line through Siobhan Kyo who's won a few balls in the early stages of this match there you have the ball again but the ball was picked up off the ground free out for Dublin yeah and as you said really good defending from Dublin there look Jerry just trying to work the ball through the lines and I suppose working it a little bit tight there at the end and giving Siobhan Kyo the chance to get back get a hurl in turn it over and did really really well then to win back the free and relieve the pressure for Dublin so Siobhan, Siobhan Kyo, sorry, I should say, is going to take this free. As I mentioned earlier on, she has played in the attack and he's got four points, four frees. And that was in last week's game against Carlo as well. So she's well able to hit them close to goal as well as back in defence. Battle for possession down in the Derry between the half-back and the full-back line. But they've won the ball and bring it up the field in the direction of Anya McAllister. Doesn't materialise on this occasion and Dublin have the ball again. Long dropping ball in towards the 20 metre line. Derry needs to be very, very careful. As we mentioned, the breeze is with Dublin. But but it's not that strong, so Derry shouldn't be struggling as much as they are in these early stages, but that's a compliment more to Dublin now than a criticism of Derry. Derry have the ball outside the 45 meter line, this is good play now, interchange of passes, Sinead McGill again in the attack, excellent block down again from Dublin, uh, winning the ball, and it's going to be a free out for Dublin again, they take it very, very quickly, of course a defender can take a free out of the hand straight away, if they're the person that's fouled, the attempted pass to Ellen Dunphy doesn't materialise, Derry have the ball again, sending it in towards the attack, just over four minutes gone and this is Shannon O'Connor Shannon O'Connor on the left and what a hook there from Dublin brilliantly hooked down there on that occasion by Abby Wine has been known to play centre back as well too many steps against the Derry attacker another free out for Dublin they're not wasting time there I think we're going to go back for that one because that was a foul for too many steps so I don't think you could take that free out of the hands No I think the foul has to be on the person themselves so but Dublin anxious to get things underway quickly here again you know they can tell they're on top and each time they turn over a Derry forward in there you know it's met with applause and, and on the sideline as if it was a score so going to be a clash ball I think now for taking that free incorrectly well yeah that's what well, that's exactly it it's going to be thrown into the 20 meter line so I just thought they were going to go back to take the free but either way Aaron Hogg throws the ball in on the 20 meter line and Dublin need to be careful Sarah Fenlon the player that wins possession tries to bring it out the field she'll chase after it as well in the blue boots goes out over the line the lines person this side of the field is Lisa Bannon from Cavan and she signals it's going to be a Derry ball and Derry just looking for the first score of the game 
came into this match with four wins from five matches that won defeating Callan against Kilkenny in round three of the group stages but the victories against Mead, Kildare, Cork and Wexford and the high scores they put in those games as well has served Noah. The number 14 is Shannon O'Doherty. She's the captain and Shannon O'Doherty puts the ball over the bar. It's taken five and a half minutes. Derry off the mark, one point to two. Yeah, and you feel that that's just what Derry needed just to settle into this game and it took someone of the experience and Captain Shannon O'Doherty to stand up and fire that one over the bar. But, you know, they've been trying to make inroads against that Dublin defence there, but Dublin have stood, stood strong for the first five minutes, but you just feel that score now might settle Derry a little bit. Derek Cook takes the puck out, gets good distance on the ball and just bounces nicely for Ellen Dunphy. She'll send it in towards the inside line. Dublin happy to bring the players out towards the middle of the field, try and isolate space. It doesn't work out for them on that occasion. Derry cleared the ball, but it's going to come straight back, you would feel, from Siobhan Kyo, and she sends it down towards the 45 near her line. Another opportunity here for Dublin to try and create something. Ellen Dunphy could control the ball, goes to ground. No foul, says the official, gets the hand pass off in the direction of Aoife Deegan. Aoife Deegan on the 45 near her line goes for a shot at the post that will not to happen on this occasion. I think that's the first wide of the game, Elaine. First wide of the game, yeah. And again, good build-up play from Dublin. You know, good ball from Ellen Dunphy in originally. was dealt with well by the Derry defence, but just couldn't quite clear it. And super pressure there from Dublin. Got it back in. The shot probably just a little bit ambitious from the distance. Puck now taken by Neve McQuillan down towards the 65 meter line. Ellen Dunphy being very busy in this match and sends another teasing ball in. But the Derry fullbacks to their defence are stepping up quickly. Didn't step up on that occasion. Bronya Skelton ball blocked down by Kira Holland. And a free is won in. We mentioned the importance of Kira Holland. That should have been a routine clearance for Derry. Absolutely. Der Derry should have dealt with that better. They didn't. And it was a super block inside there and created the chance again for Dublin. And they're fighting. You know, they really are dictating the game all over the, the field at this moment. Early stages in the match, just seven minutes gone, but Dublin have an opportunity. It's gone all quiet here in Port Leash. Respect for the free taker, and the free taker is Kira Holland. Takes the free, puts the ball over the bar. You heard, well done, Kira. In the background, her second of the afternoon, three points to one to Dublin. Yeah, you know, and that two person full forward line with herself and Gronya Skelton in there is really paying dividends for Dublin. They've got a lot of ball in there. As I said, the Derry full back line look to have dealt with it on occasion, but the half forward line are quick in on top of it again, pressure on, and they're just not letting Derry settle on the ball anywhere on the field at the moment. Dublin's big players are stepping up at these early stages. Sarah Finlan has the ball again for them, goes to the move, has the advantage, gives it off to Ellen Dunphy. Ellen Dunphy straight away always looking up to see who's in front of her. This occasion she finds Aoife Deegan and Aoife Deegan's going to go for a run here. High challenge coming in there, that's going to be a free in field. She'll get the shot at the post. It will come back for the free if she doesn't get it. And that won't be a wide, they will come back for the free. Down the right, Dublin are making an awful lot of hay. And I mentioned their big players like Siobhan Kyo, Sarah Finlan, Ellen Dunphy. Very busy. Yeah, Abby Ryan at wing back there, you know, lovely ball that time again up to Ellen Dunphy she's been on a lot of ball as you said in this in the opening eight minutes here and she's playing really really good ball in and Dublin are getting the overlap time and time again and that two person full forward line is just causing Derry problems at the minute they just can't seem to settle on it and Dublin as I said getting the overlap time and time again winning the freeze and and just creating all the running at the moment. So Kira Holland is going to take this free. Eight and a half minutes gone here in O'More Park. It should be another score for Dublin. It is another score for Dublin. It goes over the bar and Dublin are three points in front. Four points to one. Yeah, look, we mentioned beforehand, you know, the breeze, I suppose it's probably died a little bit of anything now, but Dublin's certainly looking to, to put the foot down. As you said, often when you are the underdogs, you know, you bring that little bit of, um, that little bit of abandonment to it and they've certainly dictated the pace. Yes, indeed, a good start as well, exactly what they wanted to, and Derry bringing the ball down the field again towards the attack, looking for Shannon O'Doherty. Shannon O'Doherty in possession, then the cross-field ball down towards the inside line, but again, it's a Dublin player splitting two Derry defenders, wins the ball, brings it out towards the 65 metre line, linking up very, very well are the Dublin, the second team. It was Ellen Baker that won the ball the first time. This is Aoife Deegan again, if she gets the ball in her hand, Derry struggled to deal with her, but good defending in the occasion by Gronja McNichol. I mentioned the play a bit of football in Derry, she kicks the ball down between the 45 and the 65 meter line it goes out of play right in front of us here in the main stand and it's going to be a sideline puck for Derry and it's going to be taken by Gronja McNichol from the Swatraw Club and of course as I mentioned Gronja McNichol as well one of four players uh, in this Derry panel uh, three on the field that played the one in all Ireland against Galway in 2012 Maria Mooney back in the team making Kerr two others Ethan Cassidy out injured but I think I saw her out there doing water um, carrier here today as well so uh, leader for slot Neil over time Derry have another sideline cut this time it's within range you would wonder if somebody fancies a go at this uh, Aoife Shaw is the player standing over this and a very dangerous player
here is Aoife Shaw. She scored four goals in the championship so far, but I said, no, I don't really want to have a go with this. So she's going to leave it off, and it's going to be another player to step in now for Derry to take the sideline cut, and that is going to be Anya McAllister with the blue and white helmet. And will she have a look at it? We're looking around to see players. Well, actually, it's a free, so I thought it was a sideline cup, but it's actually a free. My bat in that one. Ball goes across the field to the right and wide, so one wide each. Yeah, I thought it was a sideline myself as well, and I think maybe possibly the players did as well, so that's probably why, why maybe the change from, from sideline taker to free taker, but an opportunity there for Jerry that, that has gone a begging, you know, probably a little bit too far out on the sideline, maybe to be going for the goal, and maybe better off to have played it in sight to the likes of Shannon O'Darty and try and keep the ball in play from a Jerry point of view. Few little breaks starting to go Derry's way at the moment, but they need to take advantage of it on the scoreboard. Just over 10 minutes gone, nearly 11 played. One point to four. Ball hit along the ground by Maureen McNichol. Down in towards the attack, and Shannon O'Doherty takes possession here for Derry. Gives the pass off. This is good play here. Looks like Dervo Kane, the player to hand it. Uh, trying to get it back to the captain, but not to be in Dublin again. Reading it very, very well. And all of a sudden, the space is open up here for Dublin to Siobhan Kyo. Gives it off to Eva Deegan. Eva Deegan with a pass forward well in Dunphy. This is a great chance for Dublin to get a score and be a punishment score if it goes over the bar and it is a punishing score Ellen Dunphy the player that gets the point four between them it's five points to one yeah that's a massive score from Dublin you know right from left corner back there where Derry had been on the attack broke up the attack up the field and played it lovely through the hands as I said getting the overlap time and time again on Derry working the ball to the player in the best position and Ellen Dunphy with a super point there Rhea Raftery sends a ball inside, Shannon O'Doherty's managed to get a touch and who else but Siobhan Kyo again, in to win the ball, sends it down the field towards the 65 metre line, this might work out for Aoife Deegan, Aoife Deegan on the move here now for uh, Dublin, get within range, he's going to go for a shot at the post and held up there by Neve McQuillan, nobody following through, there's two attackers there, now looks like it'll be a free out. But Elaine, we have to say, that in its early stages and plenty of time for Derry to turn this around. A lot of people came into this game thinking Derry were going to win this comfortably. But if they are going to win it, they're going to have to work for it. Yeah, a lot of those people who weren't in the Dublin Camogie camp, I would imagine, they're the ones that are really dictating and, and playing as if they were the favourites again. You know, Derry with a chance at the far end through Shannon O'Darty, broken up by Siobhan Kyo and Dublin straight on the attack again. And I think caught maybe a little bit in two minds there as to whether they were going to go for a goal or a point and it just dropped shot short and hit the crossbar. But certainly... The longer this goes on, the longer Dublin can keep this kind of tempo up, the more they're going to keep in this game. The defending from Dublin is absolutely superb. So Sinead McGill has an opportunity here now for Derry to get their second score of the game. It does pop over the bar. It's a score that Derry needed. It's taken 13 minutes. Sinead McGill with the point. Two points to five. Yeah, badly needed. You know, it's eight minutes, I think, since their first point. So they've gone long periods of the time. And that's something that, that has been um, a trait of this Derry team throughout the championship. They went 20 minutes, I think, last weekend against Wexford without scoring. 20 minutes against Cork without scoring. So, look, they've shown us that they are capable of still coming back and getting victories in those kind of games. But, you know, once you get to quarter final the semi-final stage you need to be you can't go missing for 20 minutes in those games oh no most certainly not or your season will be over Maria Rafferty really starting to grow in this game for Derry she wears number 18 has the ball tried to pick out Shannon O'Connor but cut out again by Ellen Baker I think it was and it plays just hanging inside the 45 metre line the Derry player didn't realise she had an opportunity to go forward for a moment gives it to Quiva Glass it might come back for Shannon O'Connor from the Banner Club and she lays the pass off for Maria Rafferty Maria Rafferty loses out one on that occasion by Emma Young for Dublin and Emmy Young just drives it down the field again towards the attack and Dublin they don't mess about with the ball when they have it Ronya Skeleton with a white helmet in possession up against Megan Kerr um, Derry win the ball back through Gronya McNichol the experience tells again and Gronya McNichol sending it down the field Abby Ryan unlucky in that occasion the ball goes off her hurl goes out for a sideline cut and it'll be an opportunity again for Derry to restart the action and they'll restart the action through Aoife Shaw inside the 65 metre line. So Aoife Shaw takes the sideline cut, sends it into space and Shannon O'Darty says thank you very much. She wanted to go in a run but Dublin's staying tight. There's a player inside though and this is an opportunity from Ray McNichol maybe. Again, Dublin being brave, coming out the field, the goalkeeper Dara Cook, the referee, has blown the whistle. I'm not sure if he signalled the free, but he's blown the whistle because there's a Derry player on the ground. Yeah, it looks to be Shannon O'Darty, I think. I'm not sure if she was limping coming out to that ball or if it was something that happened after she released the ball. But again, a chance for Derry, you know, had the player inside, had the overlap, looked to be inside on the goal, but credit that Dublin defence again. They got back and, you know, Derry, I suppose, a little bit at times, probably overdoing things with the passes inside and just taking that extra pass out of it, giving a chance for the Dublin defence to get back. But um, a worry now for Derry. Shannon is down getting a little bit of attention they will want to see her leave the field injured 
No, most certainly not as well. A very, very important player, especially in the early stages for them as well, because she's been winning the ball and keeping on top of the action and keeping her side in as well. They struggle to settle in the early stages. So looking at the clock lane, 15 minutes gone in the game as we just have to hold up and play. Are your overall thoughts what you've seen so far? Yeah, look, it's probably sparked to life a little bit there in the last couple of minutes in that, that secondary point. I think we had a kick started them a little bit, but you'd have to say it's it's Dublin that have done all the hurling in that first 15 minutes. They've brought, you know, they've brought all the tempo to the game. It looks like they're imposing their game plan on it you can see what they're doing they're defending really really well breaking down the dairy attacks and they're counter-attacking so so quickly but it's the way that they're counter-attacking they can go either you know long ball we've seen Chuan Kyo knock a couple of long balls down and they're, they're well able to win those long ones or they're able to work it through the lines where they need to and you know a lot of ball going through Ellen Dunphy initially at wing forward there and that two-person full forward line inside with Grania Skelton and Aoife Deegan is really really paying dividends for them. So we're going to restart actually with a free for Dublin on their own end line driven down the field again Dublin five points, Derry two. This is the Glen Templex All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship quarterfinal brought to you in association with entry on the Camogie Association YouTube channel. Moraid McNichol wins the ball for Derry, sends it across the field in the direction of Anya McAllister and balance the screen and she goes on her bike and all of a sudden space is open up here for Derry. They're one or two scores away from really getting some grip in this match. Anya McAllister gets within range, going to go herself with the score you feel she needs. She puts the ball over the bar. An excellent point, definitely the best for Derry in this match. Two point ball game, 3-5. Yeah, and a super score for Anya McAllister. You look like, don't think she realised, you know, I thought she was surprised, I suppose, by the amount of space that she found herself into. She kept running. No Dublin defender came out to meet her, which was unusual because they have been defending so tightly. But I suppose on that occasion, Maraid McNichol had dropped back deep, won that ball for Derry and set up that attack for Anya McAllister. So play continues on now the far side of the field and Derry now just starting to get a few scores moving. Shannon O'Doherty on the ball again on the 45 near her line. Looking around, supports in front of her for Shaw. She backs herself, goes for the pulse. The umpire says, yes indeed, thank you very much. It's gone over the bar, two scores in a minute. It's a one-point ball game. Yeah, another super, super score from Shannon O'Doherty. Her touch, unreal, won it really, really well. Came out on the loop, got the got into her space and took a score from distance you know and as you said two scores in quick succession there and suddenly the Dublin lead for all the hurling they've done is down to one point. It's all nicely set up here five points to four there has to be a winner here today Dublin goes short in this occasion Siobhan Kyo showing a few skills there uh, to hold the ball but send it out the field but it's won back by Derry and they'll go again to try and get back on level terms we haven't been level in the match yet Dublin have led the whole way through since their opening score from Ellen Dunphy cross field ball down in the direction of Shannon O'Connor and uh, Ellen Baker we need to be careful here Abby Ryan comes in to help out as well she'll be playing as more holding uh, midfielder in this game you would feel but this is uh, Maria Rafferty moving inside now and just running out of a bit of space. The umpire having a good look at that, but the referee has blown the whistle, made the decision himself. That ball goes out to the left and wide, second wide for Derry. Yeah, and from a Derry point of view, I know they've tried it for the first 15 minutes there to try to run the ball in, but I think they're just giving Dublin the chance to get numbers back and to crowd out that defence. And we saw over the last point from Anya McGill and Chanel Doherty said, you know, sometimes maybe they're better to, to hurl it in from further out the field and, and leave that space inside and not give Dublin the chance to crowd that defence. Eva Shaw has a pop at the post. That looks like it's going to the right and wide. So a couple of pop shots there from Derry in the last couple of moments, not materialising after two great scores. Dublin holding on to their one point advantage, five points to four in this game. Derry started off their campaign beating Mead by two fourteen to eleven points before a victory against Kildare one fourteen to one eight in that occasion. We mentioned their loss to Kilkenny two seven to one eight on the eleventh of June. Then that one point victory in Ownbeg against Cork one sixteen to three seven was a big statement from the Oakleaf County. And the last day they beat. Wexford by 4.12 to 2.13. This is all while carrying a mini injury crisis as well. They won't take it step mini up in Derry. Dublin have the ball again inside their own 20 meter line. They need to get the ball away. Abby Ryan misses out because Maria Rafferty got a touch but this is won by Sarah Finlan and Sarah Finlan will go on the move again. Back helping out the defence when she can. She's normally looking for Ellen Dunphy. Just carried it too much in that occasion. Aoife Shaw with the touch but still in control for Dublin. Though they haven't got it away. Starting to make a few little mistakes. Aoife Shaw with the ball for Derry and if Derry could just nail their passes you'd feel they get back into this quick enough Maraid McNichol couldn't control it important interception there from Erin Kennedy she wears number 20 for Dublin ball driven out the field but Gwanya McNichol will be the player that takes this plays it low along the ground in the direction of Anya McAllister Anya McAllister hitting it high it doesn't look good though it looks like it's going to tail out again another wide for Derry and we won't panic with those Elaine three quick wides after two great scores yeah exactly three quick wides after two great scores but I suppose more positive from a Derry point of view is that last 
a little bit of defending there from their forwards. You know, those were balls previously that Dublin were working out well and they were working up the lines. Whereas on that occasion, the Derry forwards put the press on, didn't let the ball out as easily. And when the clearance did eventually come from Abbey Ryan, it was straight down to Gronje McNichol and it was back up to the Derry half of the field again. So look, that'll be more pleasing, I suppose, for um, for Derry, from a Derry point of view for the second 15 minutes of the opening half. Derry have broken the puck out down again and they play inside the Dublin 45 near line, but illegally so. It's going to be a free out for Dublin and a chance for them maybe to slow it down a bit again. As Elaine mentioned, that breeze is effectively gone, so nobody playing with an advantage at the moment. If it does come back at any stage over the next 40 plus minutes of action, it will favour the team attacking the goal to your right here in MW Hire or Moore Park in Port Leash. Derry player just receiving some, uh, well, having a drink of water anyway. It looked like he was receiving some treatment. The referee was having a chat with someone, but I think he's happy enough to restart the action here and it'll be a Dublin free out taken by Siobhan Kyo and she'll try and get Dublin up on target again. They have not scored in nine minutes. It feels a long time ago. They went five points to one up on that occasion. Their last three scores coming for Derry but the player that got that last score was Ellen Dunphy. She got the first score of the game as well. She's lost her hurl. Didn't drop it. It was dragged out of her hand. You would feel Eva Deegan to the number 19 who's Kira Clossy and Kira Clossy goes for the post. Puts the ball over the bar. Her second score in the championship. Her first today it's six points to four. Yeah and as you said you know Dublin had gone nine minutes it, it didn't doesn't seem like too long but for the dominance that they had in that first half first 15 minutes it did seem like a long time for them to have gone without a score but again once they break the ball down get it up into that dairy half of the field they've shown that they're well capable of taking scores and Kira Classy coming up on the end of that one. Yeah, the applause there in the background, a substitution for Derry. Sinead Mellon, who was a surprise she didn't start this game, is on the field of them. She replaces Shannon O'Connor and Sinead Mellon, a very, very dangerous attacker, as is her cousin Trey's when they're in a Derry or a slot Neil jersey. And no doubt that's the target here now for Derry as Bronya McNichol launches the ball down. It's an excellent take from Raid McNichol. Can she finish it off with a score? It deserves to be a score. It is a score. It goes over the bar. But Raid McNichol with a point, five points to six. Yeah, and straight from Derry's own puck out, you know, straight out through the lines to Gronje McNichol up to Marie caught really really well and a super score for her and I suppose that's more what Derry need to not be bringing the ball into contact in that Dublin defence and to try and take their scores from out the field. Derek Cook restarts the action Good distance on the ball down towards the opposing 65 meter line with Derry again starting to read those puckouts very, very well. They're on the move too. A long ball down in the direction of, well, Marie McNichol with the touch. I thought it was going for Shannon O'Doherty. Back there to help out is Erin Kennedy for the Dublin defence. She gives it to Sarah Finlan and Sarah Finlan will send it down the field again towards Sinead Daly. Doesn't happen for her in this occasion. Derry cleared the ball. A bit of tennis between the teams on the weekend that the Wimbledon champions will be decided in both ladies and men. Of course, a first time champion they'll be in the women's final, Tunisia against Kazakhstan that's the countries of the two players uh, Elena Rybakina and Owens uh, Zabor, I think I got my pronunciations right there, the two players, this is Derry on the attack, all of these sides looking to get into the All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship semi-finals, that's not to be fifth wide of the game for Derry. Yeah and Derry just lacking a little bit of composure up front at the minute you know, I'm not sure they're, they know how they want to best work the ball into that Dublin defence, you know when they carry it in, they tend to take the extra pass in it and Dublin are, are turning them over time and time again and on that occasion just the shot wasn't really on and nobody inside Shannon O'Doherty is in on the edge of the square I'm not sure if she's 100% fit she is you know anytime there's a break in play she just seemed to be down and we did see her getting a little bit of attention earlier in there but look she's still the one on the edge of the square that Derry will look to isolate if they can get quick ball into her they definitely can't afford to lose Shannon O'Doherty the captain of Derry in this match and that's probably why she's playing the full forward line at the moment you would feel Quiva Glass hand the ball there for uh, Derry couldn't bring it forward Gronje McNichol has gone in to help out as well not for the first time wins play for Derry sends a high ball down in the direction of Mairead McNichol Mairead McNichol going to go for a long shot and even as we look at this first to see if it's gone over the bar well uh, you have to nod on that occasion when they do get it right they get it very very right for the first time in this game we're all square it's six points apiece yeah and I think a lot of it is hinging on Marie McNichol there. She's really grown into the game in the last couple of minutes, you know, has moved out kind of from centre forward and is finding herself in a lot of space there and has shown that she's well capable of getting on the scoreboard as well when she gets the opportunity, but linking up really well with the players out the field around her. And as I said, she's, she's providing plenty of movement there in that dairy half forward line. Play has just been held up at the moment. It looks like it's Abby Ryan that's down for Dublin receiving some treatment. We're just watching the score here again from Mairead McNichol. And a great exhibition of some scores we've had for both teams, but especially for Derry the last couple of minutes. Abby Ryan uh, down where number eight today. She has put centre back in the campaign. She was a failure, Division 7, a player of the match for Crumlin back in 2018. A young leader that has come through the Dublin system. That's Elaine, the one thing we've been touching on regards Dublin. I was reading into the match about their school of excellence. 
the Wonderage Academy. A lot of counties have that too, but Dublin, they are producing camogie players. And we, you mentioned it in the intro about the seniors and these young players. Like a lot of these players are not far past mine, or maybe 19, 20, the majority of them. Yeah, and it's brilliant to have a team of this calibre, you know, that they can build on to, to try and make that step up to senior level. And when you have a senior team do, then doing as well as their senior team is at the moment, there's a real pathway there for players. And they know, it, you know, the future is bright for Dublin camogie. So they want, certainly want to be a part of it. And as I said, a lot of them just out of minor. And, and this is a great stepping stone for them to get up to that senior level. Dublin have made a substitution there. Chloe O'Connor coming on for Kira Clossy. It's Chloe O'Connor's fourth uh, game in this year's championship. Her first time coming off the bench. She started three matches already. Sarah Finnan with the ball for Dublin. Leaves it for Aoife Deegan. Aoife Deegan will be swarmed by three Derry defenders. But manages to pick up Abby Ryan, who thankfully is back on her feet and back involved in the action. Derry bat the ball down. It might come for Gronia McNichol. We've just four and a half minutes to go at half time. The first of our double header of action here in Port Leach today. Kerry against Mead coming up at four clock we would know our semi-finalists in the Glen Demblex All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship at the end of the day Aoife Shaw is hoping it'll be Derry she wins the ball gives it all for Megan Carr and Megan Carr sends it down towards the inside line hoping to get Maria Rafferty there who's moved into the uh, full forward line at the moment that says Sinead Mellon is out on the 40 and indeed I spot her there up against Abby Ryan that's off the ball we're watching the action and we're watching Ellen Dunphy Ellen Dunphy wants to take on the player no argument about that I don't think uh, rule we've debated you can hear people arguing in the back Background, but free out for Derry every day. No argument unless you're on the, the, the light blue side or the sky blue side here on our left hand side, they certainly are going to argue with it. But yeah, as you said, that rule again the player in possession needs to avoid the tackle that's coming in. And on that occasion, Ellen Dunphy didn't and picks herself up a yellow card. Yeah, I hope that's for the said afterwards. I know Aaron Hogg loves his yellow cards, but Ellen Dunphy gets one on this occasion, and it's going to be a free out for Derry, taken by Gwanya McNichol, and she sends the ball down the field, and looks like Gwanya McAllister will try and get in this there, but being surrounded by Jennifer Moore, who's playing out in the half-back line today, often plays in the inside line as well. Rebecca Bradley tried to pull the trigger the first time, didn't happen. Second time, lays the ball off, and Derry are just trying to move it down in the direction of Maria Rafferty, playing in corner forward there now, but again, Ellen Baker, the player that has just meeting these balls first time every time can she get the clearance off as Derry look for support it's coming from Raid McNichol Abby Ryan along the ground but doesn't find a player in blue finds a player in red and white and that is Quiva Glass Quiva Glass back to Rebecca Kirkpatrick and she sends a dropping ball nicely down for Aoife Shaw and this is a ball that Aoife Shaw really likes I mentioned she scored four goals already she might take about one here goes for the shot and it goes over the bar she was thinking about the goal no doubt about that but for the first time in the game Derry are in the lead at seven points to six yes yeah, she certainly did like that ball across and certainly was thinking of goal when she went just over the crossbar there but certainly had one eye underneath it but that's more what Derry need to do we've tried we've seen them try to get those cross field balls and on that occasion it worked really really well for them super long distance strike right across the goal all the way hopped lovely in front of Aoife Shaw there took on her player rounded her and certainly as you said had an eye for goal but credit Dublin defence they got out to her they shut off the angle and forced it over the bar Derry seven points, Dublin six. The number six for Derry is Gornia McNichol, but loses out the battle in that occasion. Good work by Aoife Deegan, but got herself isolated and Gornia McNichol again winning the ball for Derry and bringing it up the field, trying to find Shannon O'Doherty. Looks like she's come out to the half forward line to get more involved in the action. Rachel Siri takes the ball there for Dublin, gives the pass off for Emma Young, and Emma Young drives it down the field again. But Rebecca Kirkpatrick gets just ahead of Ellen Dunphy. It's the Derry number two against the Dublin number ten and it's Derry that won that ball again they're on the move and this is good play the advantage is given for Rebecca Kirkpatrick but she laid the ball off there for um, Rachel Downey with it I just couldn't make out the player for a moment but either way Derry had the advantage of a free and I'd say they'll be getting another shot at the post Yeah Derry with two sets of advantage there going forward and I think it was Anya McAllister is it on the last run there maybe got a, a high hurl into the chin she had the advantage she looked to go a step or two forward but I think the injury eventually brought her to ground there and Aaron Hogg as he said happy to, to call the play back um, and Brenda Yellow card to a second Dublin defender. Yeah, Siobhan Kyo is the player to get that, the Dublin captain for the day. So we're going to have a hold up and play just over inside the final minute of the first half. It's been a very, very interesting game. A game of two quarters, you could definitely say. Dublin getting off to the great start, going five points to one in front, but Derry have outscored them six points to one since the 12th minute. Uh, teased the goal. Dublin haven't really created a goal opportunity. Jimmy Greville um, just there chatting to both uh, Chloe O'Connor and Ellen Dunphy, giving them words of advice. Dublin 
very much in this match and uh, three minutes of added time we're going to have 30 seconds of normal time remaining so another three and a half minutes of Komogi and imagine after Anya McAllister gets back on her feet as she receives some treatment and Aaron Hogg the official from Clare checking that she is okay I mentioned his team here today Brian Kearney from Kildare Lisa Bannon from Cavan and Donny Brown from Limerick is the fourth official who lifted up the board there for a moment to signal the three minutes so it's all stopped there as Anya McAllister checks and managers get down Martin Coulter's out there getting words in as well it's like an impromptu water break without the water yeah Jimmy Greville having a quick word I think with Lisa on the sideline here maybe just to, to clarify some of those rules or have a quick word in her ear but it's not yeah. the first word he's been having with her <laughs> <laughs> no it's she'll be glad to get across to the other side of the field for the second 30 minutes I'd imagine Anya McAllister takes the free for Derry. It looks good. It's gone over the bar. It's another score for the Oak Leaf County. They go two points in front, eight points to six. Yeah, look, and I suppose from Jimmy Greville's point of view, he'll be disappointed that for a lot of that first half, Dublin have done a lot of the hurling and now suddenly coming up to half time, they find themselves two points in arrears. Just two points in arrears, but a lot. Another 30 minutes of play to come. Dara Cook takes the puck out for Dublin. They just need to get a score there to set themselves down again. Eva Deegan is a player that is definitely able to create the opportunity. Tries to send a dangerous ball inside here. This might work out for Sinead Daly. She just couldn't get the ball into her hand. Gronya Skeleton has it now. Good block down there again. Uh, was it Gronya McNichol, the player that blocked it down? Um, actually... Either way, the far side of the field, actually, it might have been Queen of Glass. We'll check that in a moment. But it's uh, Derry have conceded the free to Dublin, the far side of the field. Dublin will get an opportunity for their endeavour. But an excellent block down there. I think it was Queen of Glass, actually. Yeah, it was Queen of Glass got on the end of it, look, and it looked to be breaking nicely for the Dublin attack. You know, came out the back of the rook, looked to have the shot away, but Queen of Glass came out of nowhere, got the block in, and, you know, turned it over again for Derry. But, you know, they spilled it again, I suppose, and a chance now for Dublin just to narrow that gap before half time. A Derry player has been, received a yellow card there going into the book. We'll confirm the identity in a moment. Kira Holland is going to take this free outside the 20 metre line. One and a half of the three minutes have been played. And this is to bring Dublin back to a one point ball game. So Kira Holland knows this is an important free. Takes the free for Dublin. Puts the ball over the bar. It's a one point ball game. It's seven points to eight. Yeah, and as I said, you know, Dublin will feel that that's the least they deserve from this first 30 minutes of hurling. They've done all the hurling for the first certainly 25 minutes. Dictated the game all over the field, but, you know, found themselves going in in arrears and a chance to maybe to level it or go ahead. Yeah, Megan Kerr was the player from Derry that received the yellow card. Dublin getting a shot to level the game. The shot from Gwanya Skeleton and it goes over the bar. What a response for Dublin before half time. As you said, Elaine, to have it level, level for just a second time, eight points apiece. Yeah, look, and Derry will be kicking themselves. It looked like they had gone into a position where from being four or five points down, they were actually going to go in at half time, two points up. And I said Dublin would have been disappointed with it, but certainly with those two last scores, Dublin just showed that they have no intention of going away. They're not going away at all. Neil McQuillan drives the ball down towards the opposing 65 metre line as we play out the final 30 seconds. I'd imagine we might have a small bit more due to the injury to, or the hold up, I should say, for Anya McAllister. Thankfully, she is okay. Uh, Dublin have the ball. Good pass to Aoife Deegan. I think it was Chloe O'Connor, the player that played it off the first time, but the referee is he indicating. Uh, yeah, he had given the advantage, I think, for the tackle before that. So Dublin were playing with the advantage just before Aoife Deegan got in to get the block there. And you could see Siobhan Kyo coming forward at serious pace to try and get on that ball. So whether she fancies a go at this one before half time? This would be a massive score if she was to put this over the bar. Siobhan Kyo, four points in the championship so far. Inside her own half of the field, outside her own 65. The three minutes have been played in the first half with all eyes on the Dublin number six. Siobhan Kyo taking the free. She's definitely got some power in it. It might go good. It might go good. Siobhan Kyo puts the ball over the bar. Well, what a way to sign off the half. If that is the way we sign off the half, 9-8 to Dublin. Yeah, I could tell by the way she came forward at speed to take that free that she was confident that she was going to have a go at it. You know, she wasn't giving anyone else a chance to stand over it. And why not when she puts it over? If that's from just outside the middle of the field and all the way over the bar with something to spare on it. So a massive score for Dublin, as you said, coming into halftime. We're going to have a bit more play before the break as Derry try and bring it down and Dublin happy to take it from Siobhan Kyo. You can see the resurgence of energy in her Derry. She won that ball, but the other number six, Gronja McNichol, wins it back for Derry down the left-hand side of the field. Uh, Dublin hold on to it through Sarah Fennan. The challenge was high. The free is given. 
Uh, Jimmy Greville, the Dublin manager, had their hands out as well. And just a burst in Dublin before the break. Three points in a row. Can they add another one? We have played four minutes of at a time. It looks like a fourth player is going to be going into the book. Um, Quiva Glass was the player that uh, the referee was having a chat with. So we have, we have two yellow cards each. Dublin in front, nine points to eight. And Siobhan Kyo is going to take this free. And she wants to take it quickly if they're going to get a score out of it, you would feel. So Siobhan Kyo from Nathan Bars in Dublin. Taking the free between the 45 and the 65 meter line, sent it down towards the attack. Sinead Daly had a touch there, didn't happen for her. Gronje Skelton might have more luck. Gives it back to the number 13, Sinead Daly. Just couldn't control the ball again. The referee blows the half-time whistle and the half to start it off. Strong for Dublin. Derry came back, looked to be in control, but three late points has given Dublin the lead. Elaine Hill, would you overall thought to the first half? Yeah, that's exactly what it's been. You know, it, it twisted and turned there coming near the end. It probably took a little bit of time to, to get to life from a Derry point of view, but when they did, they looked to get into... The cruise control and, and kicked down a couple of points. Looked for a long time like they were going to go in two points up at half time, but massive, massive finish from Dublin with those last three points to ensure that they go in a point up. And look for all the hurling that they've done for the majority of that first half. They probably deserve to go in ahead. Look, Derry will be disappointed that they haven't really got into the flow of the game. You know, their game plan at times they've picked off some lovely scores. They've looked like they're 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 about to set fire and, and then it just hasn't worked out for them. But credit Dublin right from the back. Their defence has been outstanding. They've broken up that Derry attack time and time again. And you know, once they get up into that full forward line then Kira Holland inside Ellen Dunphy has been really really industrious in there and they've shown that they're able to make a count on the scoreboard so a massive 30 minutes to come and a real intent from Dublin I think just coming up to the half time break there that they're not going away they're certainly not going away and anybody thought that this was going to be one way traffic well they've definitely got their answer especially the closing stages of the half this young Dublin side in front by a point we're going to take a break for about 10 minutes we'll be back for live coverage of the second half of this Glen Templex All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie quarterfinal it's Dublin who are in front they lead by a point the halftime score in Leash. it's Dublin 9 points Derry 8 
Good afternoon, thank you very much, and welcome back here to MW Higher or Moor Park in Port Leash. This is the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Quarter Final. And at half time, it's Dublin who lead Derry by one point. Dublin nine points, Derry eight. Derry attacking the goal to the right in the second half with a slight breeze, and I do emphasize it's very slight breeze, will favour them. Uh, Elaine, we're just getting ready to start there. Both teams back in the field, not wasting time. Actually, I'll get your thoughts in a moment because the ball has been thrown in. The second half is underway. Will it be Derry or will it be Dublin? Advancing to the semi final of this year's championship. Mairead McNichol with the ball for Derry trying to level the team to the third time. What a start. Ten seconds into the second half. Mairead McNichol with the point. It's nine points apiece. Yeah, look, and she's pr proven to be the real the, the real leader up front there for Derry at the moment. You know, got two points in the first half at crucial times to pull Derry back into it. And again, from the throw and you know, you can imagine there were some harsh words in that Derry dressing room at halftime. And she certainly looks like she's come out ready to take this game to Dublin. Well, it's for opening a few minutes of this half will definitely be important because you'd imagine, as Elaine just said there, Derry just wanted to throw the kitchen sink at this Dublin team. But they've soaked up everything so far. They've definitely been able to clean it up and do the job that needs to be done. But Derry have momentum. Oh, yeah, now what a block there on that occasion by the number 22, Emma Young for Dublin. And it's enough to break down for Sarah Finlan as she tries to win possession. But Derry have the ball again. And good control there from their captain, Shannon O'Doherty, gives the ball off to Quiva Glass. Quiva Glass with a cross field ball. But Ellen Baker has been taking those diagonal balls all afternoon leaves it off for Abby Ryan and Abby Ryan minor captain this year we're told Brian Brophy I hope you're enjoying our coverage here on the Camogie Association YouTube channel brought to you in association with entry Abby Ryan minor captain this year involved in the play number six for Dublin is Siobhan Kyo and she has controlled the ball there Abby Ryan's beside her but Siobhan might go herself indeed she does has a player out to the left was trying to pick out Chloe O'Connor didn't happen on this occasion Derry spilled the play and the battle is on now between the Dublin 45 and 65 her line. The ball goes out over the line the far side of the field and it's going to be a sideline cut for Dublin. Yeah and as I said the Derry forward certainly starting this half a little bit a little bit more intensity and putting more pressure on those Dublin clearances which allowed that last Dublin clearance straight into a Derry hand but you'd have to call out Ellen Baker for the role she's played in this game for Dublin. You know, she's out in front every day for all those reading those as you said those diagonal crossfield balls really really well taking them on the hop and she's hurling from in front real corner back play. We'll go through the scores with both teams in a few moments. Derry with the ball outside the 65 metre line, down in the direction of Aoife Shaw. Aoife Shaw takes the ball, takes the turn as well, leaves her player behind her, and there's an opportunity for Derry. She goes herself. It's going to be close, and I think it did just creep in, but it would have been a Hawkeye moment if the facility was there. Either way, Aoife Shaw puts the ball over the bar. Derry in front, 10 9. Yeah, and again, it's that lovely diagonal ball down in front of Aoife Shaw. She got one in the first half there that skimmed over the crossbar, and, you know, she had the once she got that ball in her hand again, had the the um, the time to be able to turn around, check her back, make sure she wasn't going to be hooked and float another one narrowly inside that right hand upright. That's Eva Shaw's second point of the day for Derry Onya McAllister and Shannon O'Doherty also two points each. Mairead McNichol with three for Derry, Sinead McGill the other score. We'll run through the Dublin scores in a few minutes. Play again between the two 65 year lines in Dublin already. After finishing the half very strongly, they won't panic. Onya McNichol for Derry. Long dropping ball down in the direction of Shannon O'Doherty already a touch there for Rachel Siri. is it enough to take possession back for Dublin Emma Young in there fighting for a two and Rachel Siri from Fall Celtic Club has the ball lays the pass off and Dublin have it out in the 65 metre line unfortunately for Jennifer Moore she has slipped on that occasion and Derry get a touch on the ball but Dublin still fighting for it and Emma Young very very busy there bringing the ball up towards the 65 metre line Jennifer Moore there helping as well and Derry have players getting involved Derry Locaine the player who wins the ball sends it down the direction of Aoife Shaw Aoife Shaw inside the 13 metre line looking for a chance to run Erin Kennedy will stay tight with her and Erin Kennedy has done very very well she could do with some port she has the ball in her hand sends it down the left channel that's going to go out of play and that is going to be a Derry ball Sinead Mellon give up the chase in that and an opportunity for Derry to try and create another attack yeah and you could see what Aoife Shaw was trying to do on that occasion was trying to let the ball beat both herself and Erin Kennedy and maybe get a clean run into goal there but as I said credit Erin Kennedy she got back got the body over the ball did really really well to win it back but could have done with some support play coming off the shoulder before she had to put that clearance out over the sideline. Eva Shaw gets well underneath the ball across the field was hoping to pick out Shannon O'Doherty or maybe Maria Rafferty but not to be and it's Ellen Baker that takes the ball for Dublin high challenge on her that's going to be a free out the advantage given at the moment but we're going to go back for the free I wonder will he have a word with the uh, Derry attacker but it's going to be a free out for Dublin on their own 20 metre line Siobhan Kyo is getting in position the Dublin scores in the first half Kira Holland with 
four points, three of them from freeze. Helen Dunphy got two as well and then scores for Gronia Skeleton. Kira Claus, who has gone off the field since, and Siobhan Kyo, her fifth point of the championship. So, we're, again, we're... Um, and I didn't quite see the offence there, but he's decided to throw the ball in. So Dublin lose their free in that location after having the advantage. I'm not too sure if something was said or Elaine, you might have spotted something. Jennifer Moore with the ball down in towards the attack. Three Derry players there for the ball. The first player to get a touch is Megan Kerr, takes his shoulder as well in the process. Gronje Skeleton in the middle of that for Dublin there too. The ball spills out. It might spill out nicely for Chloe O'Connor. She has the ball in her hand, trying to find a way inside, surrounded by Derry jerseys. Great defending it is from Derry. They've won the ball and send it out the field to Anya McAllister. Drops it the first time of asking inside her own 45 meter line. Holds it up again. Looks around and plays it into space the far side of the field. But Abby Ryan might win the race for this ball up against Sinead Mellon. Abby Ryan kicks it along the ground there as well. In the towards the 45 meter line. Has possession here now for Dublin. They're on the move for Dublin. Abby might go for this. Abby Ryan sending a ball towards the goal. It'll be a great score if she gets it. It's not going to carry. And well read by the goalkeeper Neve McQuillan. Being surrounded by players but the ball goes out over the line and it's going to be a sideline cut for Dublin. Yes, yeah, super play there by Abby Ryan up the right hand side you know got out in front of, of Sinead Mellon and kept that ball going ahead of her and got the shot away look it was a high dropping ball it was a dangerous ball across into the square and credit Neve McQuillan and the Derry goal did well to get out on it her clearance out over the line and a chance now for Dublin just to get on the attack again. Lucy Quinn is coming on the field to play for Dublin. She wears number 17. She replaced Erin Kennedy, who was in defence, and Lucy going in to mark Aoife Shaw, it looks like. Uh, here, the Dublin number 13 is Sinead Daly. She takes the sideline cut, doesn't find the intended target, and now Derry are on the move again uh, past the 65 meter line. Great one by Sinead McGill, who's covered both sides of the field in this match. Jennifer Moore with the ball for Dublin. Sends a hand pass into space, but only as far as Braid McNichol. Braid McNichol getting away from the players, is on the move, wanting to go on the right side not to be gives it to Shannon O'Darty. she'll go in the left side Shannon O'Darty with a shot and Shannon O'Darty puts the ball over the bar and puts Derry two points in front it's 11 points to nine yeah look and Dublin be disappointed there that came from a sideline ball they had it in an attacking position for the, for themselves and gave it away cheaply enough to Derry but credit to Derry you know they turned it over really really well worked it through the lines again and those two big players for them up front Murray McNichol licking up with Shannon O'Darty to get the score on that occasion we talked about the importance of scores in the opening 10 minutes of the second half. Derry have treated them, Dublin have none. This is Sinead Daly sending in towards the attack, trying to find Kira Holland. And Kira Holland can't keep the ball in play. That goes out over to the line and wide. I think it's just the second wide of the game for Dublin. Derry had five in the first half. Need McQuillan will restart the play. Yeah, I think it was just that one wide for Dublin in the first half, which just goes to show how economical their forwards were with that ball that they had there. You know, nine points in that first half, a real flurry of three coming into, into half half time to, to make sure they went in one ahead. Dublin won the ball back through Emma Young and she sent it down towards the 45 metre line for Aoife Deegan and Aoife Deegan just wants to see would she go for a shot up against it gives the pass back in the direction of um, Sinead Daly but it doesn't happen for Sinead Daly and now on the move again is Derry and this is good play from Anya McAllister gives the pass over Mairead McNichol Mairead McNichol outside the 45 metre line hand passes it forward Derry slink up play when they get it moving it's very very good Derry Kane involved as well Anya McAllister out to Aoife shot turns over Derry a shot a goal for Derry a goal for Derry and a team goal it was too finished off by Aoife Shaw but it was the movement of Elaine Hillwood of Derry as we see here that made that goal yeah and that's exactly what they had been trying to do in the first half you could see them try to walk it in but they just overpassed it on occasion in the first half took too much out of it but on this occasion Anya McAllister all the way into Aoife Shaw and the way it was worked through the hands there super score and, and you feel that might be the goal now that might just kickstart Derry in this game what it does guarantee the next score was critical especially for Dublin they need to respond to the goal, get themselves back up and running in this match and Kira Holland no better player to do it, gives the pass off in the direction of Aoife Deegan but Derry and Megan Kerr are starting to find their players indeed it's Rebecca Kirkpatrick who did her a disservice that wins the ball, gives it out in the direction of Sinead Mellon, Sinead Mellon moving towards the 65 meter line trying to pull the trigger but Sarah Finlan said no, however Sarah Finlan hasn't got the ball, Derry still in with possession Quiva Glass with a cross field ball again they're starting to realise there does hate to be made down with Aoife Shaw 
and she fancies a harvest here today. That was her fifth goal of the championship. She got 2-2 last week against Wexford. She goes for a shot at the post. That's not going to happen for her on that occasion. The ball goes out to the right and wide. Yeah, she'll be disappointed with that one. Look, looked up a couple of times, I think, for an option inside. Couldn't quite see it. Couldn't quite get around the Dublin defender either. So opted to have the shot and it was probably the wrong option on that occasion. You know, it would have been a big score for Derry just to add on to that goal and just to stretch that lead another little bit. Dara Cook takes the puck out for Dublin, not finding the distance she found in the first half at the moment. Maybe she was deliberately going short, but she found Maria Rafferty. She lays the ball off, an opportunity for a shot here for Derry. And the ball has gone over the bar. I think it's Sinead Mellon, the player that got it. And Derry get that score. They go six in front. Yeah, and Dublin just starting to struggle a little bit now on their own pockets. As you said, I'm not sure there whether Dara Cook wanted to go short with it or whether that was the only option she had. But either way, Dub or Derry sniffed it out, turned it over, and Sinead Mellon with the shot. Sinead Mellon with the shot to make it 112 to 9 points. Anya McAllister on the move again down the right here for Derry. Bounces it on the ground. Goes for a shot at the post. It looks good from my angle. It looks good from Anya McAllister's angle. It goes over the bar 10 minutes into the second half. 113 to 9. Yeah, and that's the Derry we've come to see uh, and to know in this championship. I think the little bit of pomp, the little bit of, of composure on the ball there from Anya McAllister. Their tails are up now and they know that they're going to kick for home from here if they can just keep the scoreboard ticking over. Dublin need a big score very, very quickly and just to get themselves back into the game. They might even need bigger than that, but it's Terry who have the ball. Maraid McNichol on the 45 meter line, tried to pick out Derva O'Kane, who was coming through there, but it's cut out on that occasion. It looks like Emma Young, she gives the pass off to her left and Dublin will move it down the field again towards the opposing 45 meter line. What can be done here for the number 12 is Kira Holland. Can't get a touch. Derry have wised up to keep it to tighten her. Number 17 for Derry's Maria Mooney back in the Derry team and showing exactly her experience and her importance with this side. Audrey McAllister commits the foul. The referee indicates it was a throw. Uh, so it's going to be a free out for Dublin. Yeah, look to just to blow um, on you there for a throw. I think a throw ball trying to pick up uh, Shannon O'Darty. The pass had gone a little bit behind her anyway. And Dublin looked like they were going to turn it over. But Aaron Hogg, I think, going over to have a word with, with Abby Ryan, whether she maybe encouraged him to call that one. It's Abby, Abby Ryan indeed who gets the yellow card. So, the uh, first yellow card of the second half, third in the match for Dublin. Anya McAllister on the ground receiving some attention at the moment. A very, very important score for Derry is Anya McAllister. That score she got a few moments ago was her third point of the game, her 21st point of the championship. Her team, seven points in front of this match, and Dublin with the free. That's going to be taken by Siobhan Kyo as we approach the 12 minute mark of the first, second half. Half, I should say, sorry, here in MW Higher or Moore Park in Port Leash, the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Championship quarter final. Derry 113, Dublin 9 points. Dublin just needs something to get themselves going in the second period. Siobhan Kyo is a player that can inspire that. She got a monster of a free before half time. I'm not too sure if she was going directly for this one. It's not going to carry, but can somebody get in the end of it? Uh, somebody did, and that was the Derry goalkeeper, Neve McQuillan. And Gronya McNichol is never too far away from the breaking balls. Now, Dublin have managed to get. Get the ball back. I think it was Ellen Dunphy there fighting for Gronje Skeleton in control at the moment. Has the ball in her hand, looking around for options. Spots Eva Deegan. A little touch there from Derver O'Kane. I think just got in the way of that. Stopped that in its tracks. And Sinead Mellon back to help out the Derry defence. And it's down the field for Mairead McNichol. And Mairead McNichol is on the run again. Eva Shaw is isolated inside, but I think Mairead is going to go herself with this. Eva's following through just in case. The umpire goes with a white flag. Mairead McNichol with the point. Another score for Derry, it's 114 to 9 points. Yeah, and everything that we spoke about Dublin in that first half, you know, breaking up attacks and going up and getting scores, it's, it's Derry that are doing it in the second half again. That was a long ball in from the, the free from Siobhan Kyo, broken up by the Derry defence. Great ball down, super take by Mairead McNichol and a super strike from distance and under pressure. And, you know, as you said, had Aoife Shaw inside her if she needed her, but opted to go herself and a super, super score. 114 to 9 points, 1 6 unanswered for Derry in the second half. And between Mairead McNichol and Aoife Shaw in particular, they are starting now to get their big names on the scoreboard. This is Derver O'Kane. She's been doing an awful lot of work as well. She deserves a score and she gets a score. Derver O'Kane puts the ball over the bar 13 and a half minutes into the second half, 115 to 9. Yeah, and the passes that just weren't sticking for Derry in the first half are sticking here in this occasion. Super ball in again from Anya McAllister. Found Derver O'Kane in that space. Lovely little sidestep just to get out and get around the Dublin defender out onto her left hand side and just push it up and over the bar. 
Play restarts around the middle of the field in Dublin again, just can't get the brakes. Derry doing everything right at the moment and it's already inside the Dublin 65 metre line. Always seems to be an extra player. Sinead Mellon on this occasion lays the pass over and here comes Gronia McNichol. Gronia McNichol is sending into space inside as well where Derry are trying to make one-on-one -on -one situations occur and it might work out for them here for Anya McAllister. She's looking for support or maybe she's not. She wants to turn her left inside, go for a shot at the post and the umpires are just working on autopilot now look up in the air pin down to nod lift the white flag over the bar 116 to 9 yeah and again it was that lovely crossfield ball again into all that space on him callister had to run into it as you said looked up for the option i think to play it back out the field but when the dublin defenders all stuck to their own players she saw the opportunity for herself and swung it nicely in around off her left hand side Derry really now putting the boot on the pedal here now towards an All-Ireland semi-final place. Anya McAllister on the right again. She hit one from the left a moment ago. This one is from the right. They say you should have two sides to Camogie. Anya McAllister certainly does. 117 to 9. Yeah, and autopilot is the right word for it down there. As soon as that, as Anya McAllister gets on that ball, I'd say the umper with the white flag could be going for it straight away. Her radar is certainly in today and she's a player full of confidence. You know, we saw her going down the line a few minutes ago, hopping the ball off the ground and she's someone who really is enjoying their game out there today. Well certainly we can say that if the Cork or Goey management are looking at this at the moment they won't fancy the idea of playing Derry in another Ireland semi-final to get in this groove but Dublin are not done yet. Siobhan Kyo with a pass across to Kira Holland. Kira Holland uh, just challenged on that occasion as she was about to do something with the ball. The referee has to hand out for an advantage so it's going to be a free in for Dublin in the lane. Just an opportunity for them to get a score, put a ball over the bar and then see where they stand with the final quarter to come. Yeah you know just to get off the scoreboard in the second half you know they looked a little bit shell-shocked everything they were doing so well in the first half. It's Derry that are doing it in the second half and you know where the passes weren't quite going to hand for Derry in the first half. It's Dublin now that are struggling to get on the ball and to string a couple of passes together. But again, a super run from Siobhan Kyo on that occasion just to, to get up the field, get a ball across and as he said, a chance to them just to get off the scoreboard in the second half. And Kira Holland obliges. She puts the ball over the bar. So that brings Dublin to double digits for the afternoon. 10 points to them, 117 to Derry. A good high scoring game of Camogie. It is here in MW Hire O'Moore Park in Port Leash. And Neve McQuillan from Swatra, the goalkeeper for Derry, will restart the action. And she's going to drive this ball down the field again, try and keep putting the pressure on these young Dublin players. Uh, I was going to say an excellent catch there from uh, Aoife Shaw, but she didn't catch it in her hands. And it's won by Chloe O'Connor. Chloe O'Connor along the ground towards Sinead Daly. Sinead Daly, though, just not getting a moment to breathe by the pressure being put on by Sinead McGill and then Quiva Glass. Quiva Glass just doesn't pick out Mairead McNichol. I think Abby Ryan is the player that gets in the way for Dublin. Dublin, but she hasn't found it. Rachel Theory, who the ball was going down to, and it's back Shannon O'Doherty that wins the ball for Derry, sending it down towards the attack. We can tell you that Anya McGill is warming up for Derry and should see action in the next few minutes. Uh, Jennifer Moore with the clearance for Dublin, but only past the 45 metre line. Derry O'Kane with a touch comes in to meet our Dublin opponent with the ball, but does it illegally so, says the referee. Good work there by Sarah Finlan, and it's going to be a free for Dublin, going to be taken by Chloe O'Connor. And Chloe O'Connor sending it down for Siobhan Kyo, who's pushed up the field. Siobhan Kyo on the move here now. She can make things happen for Dublin. Tries to flick it past Gordon McNichol. If that ball comes up to her hand, it'll be brilliant. A hurl has gone missing. She slides in on the slither. Derry didn't bother them. They win the ball back. Shannon O'Doherty drives it down the field again. And Derry player is tying her laces, but there's others out there that can do the job. Aoife Shaw is back on her feet. Anya McAllister with the ball gives it to Aoife. Aoife's going to have a pop at the post. Didn't get the connection on that that she wanted. That ball is going to go harmlessly wide. But for a moment there, I thought that Siobhan Kyo was going to give us a scoring moment uh, supreme. Yeah, you know, when you look at her trying to hop the ball over Gronje McNichol's head and you'd say, I don't know about that. And she did and got on it again. And just unfortunately for her, lost the hurry there but still stay going forward got a boot to it got to kick it forward to keep the momentum going but you know as I said that experienced Derry defence didn't panic got back worked it out and a superb use of the hand pass again to work it over and out this is a nice ball in for Sinead Daly there Abby Ryan with the initial ball to Kira Holland Sinead Daly looking for support gives it back to Kira Kira sticking about goals goes the first shot a goal for Dublin a goal for Dublin and Kira Holland puts the ball to the back of the net a superb strike is this the start of a comeback we just spoke about the experience of that very def defence there, but what experience and what composure to slot that one away by Kira Holland, you know, it only looked like maybe a half a goal a chance, but she saw that opening in the gap in, in Eve McQuillan's goal and put it away so, so well, super ball across initially, and Sinead Daly did really well, well. you know, jink back left, right found Kira Holland with the hand pass, and as I said, from outside the 21, just saw the space and put it far enough away from Eve McQuillan
Kira Holland will be one of the most experienced players in this Dublin team. She is only 21, but showed her experience in returning to the Dublin setup in 2020 after a couple of years away from the underage ranks. Murray McNichol looking for the response for Derry, and Dublin trying to let the ball roll out, but Derry fighting for everything they need to get a score back, you would feel, as Anya McAllister sent it across the gaps here for Dublin. An opportunity, Dick Derby Kane was the player that tried to hit it, and Dublin just trying to get the ball away from the goal. That ball could bounce anywhere at the moment. It's like a scrum. It's like watching New Zealand in Ireland this morning in the rugby the referee eventually says that the Dublin defence resisted well enough to clear the ball and free out for Dublin yeah big moment for them there you know that ball looked to be drifting wide from, from Aoife Shaw's initial shot but I think it was Maria Rafty got a hurl to it kept it in and the ball across the Gervalo came was a super super ball but Dublin got the numbers back again as they so often did in that first half smothered out the opportunity and then happy to win the free take it and relieve the pressure down there Neil McCormick is coming on for Dublin, her third appearance in this year's championship, uh, replacing Aoife Deegan. So that's the change for Dublin as we look at the clock and just over 10 minutes remaining, seven points between the teams. But that Dublin goal all of a sudden makes it interesting. If they can get the next score, bring it back to six. You could start to believe again if you're a Dublin supporter. Rachel Siri has the ball, foul in the process, and it's going to be a free out for Dublin. It's going to be taken by Chloe O'Connor. And Chloe O'Connor. Uh, they are between the 45 and the 65 meter line and I'm just looking at the water carrier out there I don't know if you saw her on screen but it definitely looks like Aoife Annie Cassidy for Derry just getting some liquids into her players anytime there's a break and play an experienced leader she is and Derry will hope she'll be back for the later stages of this championship providing of course that they get the job done it's not done yet Gwanya McNichol loses out to Siobhan Kyo who looks like she's pushed forward in the attack for this final quarter of the game and Dublin trying to will the ball down towards the goal through Kira Holland out to meet it as Neve McQuillan and Neve McQuillan goes surrounded by two Dublin players and Dublin starting to do the things they started off this match at putting pressure on Derry here they know now they have to throw everything at this the break gets away from Chloe O'Connor Mairead McNichol uh, tries to bring it into space to pick it up takes the challenge from Emma Young goes in the move Abby Ryan stays tight with her but Mairead McNichol sends it into space hoping that Anya McAllister will get in this the referee said there was a high challenge beforehand so it's going to be a free in for Derry exactly what Derry needed exactly what Dublin didn't yeah looking again it was that big player Mairead McNichol you know stood up there. I think she got a clip on maybe the back of the helmet just as she released that ball into the path of, of Aoife Shaw but you know Derry would be happy to take it back, take the free and, and just to get that scoreboard taken over again and just break that Dublin momentum. So Derry looking for an opportunity here now to put uh, well, the seven points between them at the moment. We have eight and a half minutes remaining and we're waiting for the free to be taken. It'll be presumably be Anya McAllister that will take this free inside the 45 meter line. Anya McAllister does take the free, puts the ball over the bar. Eight points between them again. Eight minutes to go. It's 118 to 110. Yeah, look, and Dublin need a response to that now again. They've had a big 10 minutes there with that goal, a couple of points, and they just got back into that game but that free will just release the pressure a little bit for Derry and you know it just kicks them on another little bit ahead puts eight points between the teams again Referee just stop and play for a moment as Jennifer Moore receives some attention and thankfully she is okay good to continue Jennifer Moore was playing in the Dublin under 14 just back in 2017 so another of these young stars coming through uh, the dub stars as they call them for the future and they put in a productive effort here today even if the scoreline is not with them at this current moment in time Jennifer Moore sends the ball down in towards the attack here Holland days the ball off here now and this is Neil McCormick on the run gives the pass off a chance here now for Ellen Dunphy and she just got caught by the Derry body in the end as she was about to pull the trigger we were close to a second goal and play all of a sudden is at the other end and Ellen Baker as she's been doing all day has to win this ball but she hasn't won the ball Terry on the move to Marie Rafferty she goes for the shot to save him Deborah Cook the rebound there for Eva Shaw doesn't come for her and the referee says a foul on the Dublin goalkeeper it's going to be a free out nearly a six point swing and big, two big moments in the match yeah that's end to end stuff right there for you know credit Neve McQuillan in the Derry goal came out quick off her line and smothered away that opportunity Derry as they've done so often in the second half straight back down the field again and Ellen Baker just caught out on that occasion for the first time I think in this game and, and Dublin got or Derry got the chance to get around her get the shot away and Aoife Shaw nearly with the rebound but again as just as much as we credit it Neve McQuillan in Derry goal credit Derek Cook in the Dublin one she stood strong took a heavy tackle there has won her free out but has certainly prevented a second goal for Derry 
So Dara Cook just receiving some attention there. She uh, accountant by trade, that's what she studied. She also studied physical therapy, 23 years of age and uh, very brave on that occasion. But they'll be hopeful now that they're not going to lose her. We're just keeping an eye on the Dublin bench as well to see if there's any plans for changes. As we look at the clock, just over six minutes remaining here in MW Hire or Moore Park in Port Leash. Derry 118, Dublin 110. Concern for Dublin at the moment is their goalkeeper too, but she is sitting up that's an encouraging sign Emma Young just keeping an eye on her as well to see if she is okay Jimmy Greville there standing on the line he's the Dublin manager looking around talking to his management team and uh, Dara Cook is just being assessed now to make sure that there's no head injury there as well and she is fit to continue she's been given the helmet that's good for Dublin she will be able to finish the match yeah and she's probably going to take this free out now again and look I suppose Dublin really going in search of this victory now as we've mentioned Siobhan Keogh is pushed up front and you know we've seen glimpses of her on occasion there you know well able to run straight at that dairy defence well able to get the overlap and to break those tackles so you know Dublin will be confident that if they can keep it within 8 points for this last 6 or 7 minutes you know they probably have what 10 minutes remaining to try and close that gap and if they can get enough ball up to Sean Kyo we've seen with that last couple of opportunities what they're capable of doing up there Certainly, if Dublin get a second goal, you can't rule them out with this yet. But the ball is down in the middle of the park. Dara Cook takes the free. Free to continue. Sinead Daly tries to get a touch there for Dublin. But Derry win the ball again. Down along the line from Anya McAllister in the direction of Maureen McNichol. Uh, Maureen McNichol, it was the pass actually came from Rebecca Bradley. But it's down in towards the goal. Dublin needs to be very, very careful. He for sure was lurking around. Not to be there on that occasion. Sinead Mellon will take this ball. Is the pass off for Maria Rafferty. Maria Rafferty moves towards the 30 meter line. Has the advantage. She'll you go low for a shot across the goal but we're going to go back for the free it was a free shot for Derry they'll get an opportunity for Anya McAllister to stretch their lead yeah I'm not sure if Maria Rafferty knew she had the advantage there or not but uh, it was a real rasper of a shot straight across the goal didn't really trouble Derry Cook but really clever play I suppose and really experienced from Sinead Mellon there to allow that ball to beat her on the first occasion get around to her player then and lay off the pass inside to Maria Rafferty and you know knowing that she had the advantage got the shot away but as I said a chance now again for Anya McAllister just to pop this one over the bar and, and just just keep Derry a comfortable lead ahead. Dublin players received a yellow card in the process there as well. We'll confirm the identity in just a moment. But Anya McAllister waiting for a ball before she takes the free. So it'll be the free in just to the left of the D, halfway between the uh, 20 meter line and the 45 meter line. I'm not too sure if it was Jennifer Moore, the player that got that yellow card, but either way, we watch Anya McAllister taking the free. Could she put nine points between the teams? She puts the ball over the bar, and Derry have weathered the storm of the goal. They've replied with two points, two frees for Anya McAllister, 119 to 110. Yeah, and Dublin just really starting to run the bench here now. Another substitute. I think Libby, Libby Pepper ready to go into the action there now and see what she can bring to this last 10 minutes for Dublin. Excellent take there in the air by Sinead McGill to send it down towards the attack uh, not to be and uh, Dublin will win the race as the pace is starting to drop a little bit. Emma Young uh, will it. He sends it up towards the 65 meter line. Well, when I say the pace has dropped. It doesn't necessarily drop for Rebecca Bradley. She wins the ball back and uh, gives it back to Emma Young again and Dublin will bring it up towards the 45 meter line and I've used the tennis analogy already so I can't use it a second time in the one commentary. Terry with the ball in the 65 meter line gives it to Aoife Shaw that came from Rebecca Bradley. Aoife Shaw tries to hand pass off Dublin and pose themselves getting in the way and it's won back by their number 17 who is Lucy Quinn and Lucy Quinn sends the ball across looking for Neve McCormick. Neve McCormick along the ground hoping Siobhan Kyo can get in the end of this. Siobhan Kyo up against Rebecca Kirkpatrick and the Derry player um, I'll let you judge that one there as well, but there you get the free house. Yeah, cute cornerback play, I think is what you call that one from, from Rebecca Kirkpatrick there. You know, knew she probably wasn't going to win the race for pace and get that ball into her hands. So was happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sean Kyo, let her overshoot it and then went down after her. So yeah, I think cute cornerback play is what we'll classify it under. <laughs> Libby Papard coming on for Dublin. She's going to replace Jennifer Moore. Lane will get you to have a think about the player of the match there and we'll uh, pick a player of the match in just a couple of moments as it looks like Derry are on their way to join Cork and Galway in the Glen Dimplex All Ireland Intermediate Camogie Semi Finals. They will take place in two weeks' time in uh, UPMC Nolan Park in Kilkenny at uh, two o'clock and four o'clock. Uh, fixtures, of course, to be determined uh, after we know the four semi finalists. Steve Shaw with the shot for Derry puts the ball over the bar. Two minutes to go. It's 120 to 110. Yeah, looking super scoring from Derry. You know, considering they'll probably be disappointed enough with a lot of their first half performance. They've, they've kicked on in the second half and put 112 onto the eight points they had in that first half. So, look, looks like they're on their 
their way to a semi-final place here now today and a nice position I suppose for Martin Coulter and his management team in Derry to be in you know into a semi-final comprehensive win in a quarter final but areas to work on for the next two weeks Sinead McGill got a touch there for Derry but it goes out over the line in front of us here in the commentary box and Gronje Skeleton is going to take this we have 90 seconds of normal time remaining 10 points between the teams Derry on their way to victory and uh, down and towards the attack well down as far as the Derry half back line Gronje McNichol with the clearance for them across field ball on the far side of the field and hoping that Maria Rafferty can get on this Chloe O'Connor staying very very tight to her and does enough to pull off the Derry attacker who goes out over the line the far side of the field going to be a sideline cut for Dublin so while we're watching that lane we'll break if there's any big scoring moment the players that have impressed you overall and your overall player of the match yeah look from, from a Dublin point of view I think uh, special mention to Ellen Baker wearing five and playing that corner back there she's been out in front all day really tenacious play and you know out every ball on the hop defend it really really well throughout Siobhan Kyo I know is, is positioned at six with six on her back there but has played in the half forward line and the half back line but is equally comfortable in each of them I thought she was outstanding today for for Dublin and up front look I think Ellen Dunphy had a really good first half was probably marked out of it a little bit in the second half as Derry grew more into the game and alongside her Kira Holland you know I think she's finished with 1-5 today she's been a, a superb forward for Dublin inside in that two person full forward line and carried a lot of the Dublin attack in that first half and look from a Derry point of view then I suppose they wouldn't have had too many at half time you wouldn't have picked out too many of their players they were they were struggling all over the field maybe and, and playing second fiddle to, to Dublin for a lot of it but throughout the field just break for the We're just watching a the shot there from Monia McAllister that goes to the left and wide continually sorry just from uh, from their defensive point of view I suppose I thought Neve McQuillan was really lively in the goal you know had to come out and be brave with that save came out quick off her line for a couple of other ones and you know probably shot out in the Dublin attack time and time again Gráinne McNichol really grew into the game at centre back and Derville O'Kane and Quiva Glass probably dominated that midfield and, but up front I think is where Derry had the real match winners when it needed it. They had their big players to step up for the occasion. Anya McAllister, Mairead McNichol, Aoife Shaw all did a lot of hard work and got onto the ball and got onto the score sheet as well. But overall, I think over the air for me, number 11, Mairead McNichol was probably the, the standout player of the match, closely followed by the two girls who's just worked that pass with her, Anya McNichol and Aoife Shaw. But I think for just for consistency over the full 60 minutes, Mairead McNichol probably shades it for me. Mairead McNichol is our player of the match here on the Camogie Association YouTube channel brought to you in association with Entry Onya McAllister and Eva Shaw were auditioning for a lane there with that attempted attack <laughs> didn't quite work out for them as well so we'll stick with our original prediction and well done to Mairead McNichol uh, we have played one minute of added time in this game the referee or the fourth official I should say indicated three in total so we have two more minutes remaining Derry 120 Dublin 110 Molly O'Neill is on the field to play for Dublin as well as a shot at the post I think it's Sinead Mellon the player that took the shot at the post puts the ball over the bar another score for Derry 11 between them yeah and her second point and I suppose just come back to the player of the match I looked at Anya McAllister she hopped that ball going down the line earlier and I said if she hops this and scores this she'll be my player of the match but then Murray McNichol popped up on the far side won that super catch out of the air and swung it over off her left hand side so it's it's turned and swayed between the two of them to for most of that second half but look I suppose that's what we spoke about beforehand was the experience of Derry and the big players on the big day and when they needed it today and look they won't be happy with that first half they were second to most balls in that first staff and you know it's not one they look back fondly with but when they needed I think those big name players the big experienced players stood up and then as well as standing up all over the fields they were able to make a count on the scoreboard which ultimately is where it tells when you end up with a score of 121. Encouraging signs going forward. This is Gronya McNichol who wants to get involved in the action before the finish. Down towards Aoife Shaw. Be left for Anya McAllister. Anya McAllister will go for a shot at the post. The umpires are not too sure, but they've decided to give the point. The ball goes over the bar. Another score for Anya McAllister. 12 between them now. 122 to 110. I'm curious will the referee go in to talk to the umpires about this? Yeah, I think it's actually the linesman here in front of us that he's talking to. Certainly from my position here, I thought it looked like it had gone to the right and wide. I don't think it crept in, and, and the Dublin players were a little bit adamant about it too, but. Well, we're not too sure exactly what decisions be made there because they haven't looked like they've cancelled the score, but the referee didn't write anything into his book, I don't think. So, uh, the 122 to 110 is the score we have up here in in um, a more park, of course, on your screen. We have a 121 to 110. Looks like it's going to be a material here now, but Chloe O'Connor with the ball uh, sending it down towards the attack. So, he might well have given that score, I would feel, as the umpires didn't indicate that they were cancelling it out. So, we'll assume it's a 12 point ball game. Tank feet's on much closer contest. We don't have to worry about uh, debates about wins at the end where we are looking at Ellen Baker fighting with Anya McAllister for possession of the ball uh, Anya McAllister has gotten and gives the pass over Aoife Shaw three minutes have been played of out of time Aoife Shaw on the move has the advantage she might need it she would feel she goes in towards the post puts the ball over the bar and it's another score for Derry Aoife Shaw with the point 123 to 110
Yeah, and I just see Ellen Baker now. You know, we gave her credit there for the tenacious going back to play, display. She's over on Anya McAllister now, and you just wonder is that a move that Dublin maybe could have made earlier in this game? You know, Anya McAllister had a huge impact on the game. I think she finished with seven points herself, and Roisin Baker or Ellen Baker, sorry, had defended really, really tenaciously throughout. So maybe something when Dublin look back on this game for learnings, maybe that's something that they would have looked at, maybe trying to shut down Anya McAllister a little bit earlier. But look, it's probably Robin Peter to pay Paul. You know, um, Ellen Baker was doing a super job where she was on Sinead Mellon and Maria Rafferty so the chances are one of those two players might have stepped up if um, if Anya McAllister had been marked out of it. Indeed she had been it's enough for Derry in the end you would have heard the final whistle in the background Derry and Derry have beaten Dublin by 13 points in the Sklin Denplex All-Ireland Intermediate Camogie quarterfinal a dominant second half where they outscored their opponents by 115 to 1-1 and that was the difference between the teams and Elaine uh, you touched on a lot of it there in the closing stages of the match but your overall assessment of this game Yeah look it was the second half I suppose that first 15 minutes where Derry really kicked into gear and you could see straight from the throw and you know they were anxious to make up for that first half performance Dublin and had dominated and just when it looked like Derry were going to get a foothold in it, Dublin finished the half so strongly with those three points that last score, a massive point from Siobhan Kyo in the middle of the field and what a player she is to look forward to coming through the ranks in Dublin but you know Derry came out in that second half and showed exactly why you know their experience I suppose at this level and, and the players who have experience of winning all Ireland and things like that so you know they really fought back into the game but credit Dublin you know they got that going and it looked like they might kick on again but you know I suppose Derry had the experience and ultimately they had the score and forwards on him McAllister Mairead McNichol and Aoife Shaw up front you know and that was ultimately the difference I think when they had their period of dominance around the field they were able to make it count on the scoreboard and look 123 is superb scoring from Derry and as I said it's a nice position to be going into you know into an All-Ireland semi-final having scored 123 but still know that you have a lot of areas to work on for the next two weeks. Now it will be an open draw in the All-Ireland semi-final whether it's Kerry, Mead, Cork or Galway their opponents as well. From what you saw here today the first time we've seen Derry live we've uh, we've heard an awful lot about their performances we've seen bits and bobs through the various streams. Um, are they all genuine All-Ireland contenders? Look I don't think on that 60 minutes performance today I don't think they'll they'll worry maybe Cork or, or Galway um, are probably the two front runners at the minute being the two that are already into the semi-finals. On that 60 minute performance probably not but certainly they show glimpses of it, they show patches of what they're capable of, but I suppose I spoke before, during commentary about the 20 minutes maybe that they went without scores in, in the Wexford game last weekend, in the Cork game the weekend before you know they were able to dig out victories, but if you go 20 minutes I suppose against Galway and in an All-Ireland semi-final or maybe you know Cork and Crow Park in an All-Ireland final you're probably not going to find yourself on the winning team if you go to sleep for 20 minutes in an All-Ireland semi-final or final, so look I think if they can produce the performance we've seen, the glimpses of for a full 60 minutes, they certainly trouble anyone, look, and each step they go they'll grow in confidence and they realise that you know they're well capable of mixing it up in this level of company. The second half certainly shows with Dublin there. We had them on our screen a moment ago, but like we talked about how young they are, they are the second team in the county. A lot of work being done to bring these young players through now as well. With someone like Jimmy Greville over them going forward, they will be boosted. But they, they'll be disappointed to have lost, and especially the third quarter where the game got away from them. But they'll take so much out of this to say that they're going in the right direction. Absolutely. Look, and I think that was even evident. You know, Jimmy greeted each of those players as they were coming off the field. They're either being substitutes or at the end of the game or whatever, happy with the performance. And look, I think that's what it is today. They came and they got a performance. A lot of people would have predicted maybe, you know, a big Derry win and that Dublin would have been a little bit out of their depth here. But they certainly showed it, certainly in that opening 30 minutes, that, you know, they were certainly at home in this kind of company. And, and that's what Dublin needs. You know, you need to be constantly competing at this level, I suppose, at the knockout stages of these competitions and, and that builds confidence and, and it keeps the players involved and it keeps a consistent panel of players there and look, I'm sure some of those girls will make the step up onto the senior team in the coming years and so the longer that they can stay competitive at this level the better it is for Dublin Camogie. You can just see in your screen there the Glen Dimplex player, the matches picked by Orna Lane Aylward, Moray McNichol received her trophy there a moment ago from Oakdron coming Camogie in the hair and Hilda Breslin and Derry are through to the final four that's it from our opening game of two matches here in MW Har O'More Park in Port Leash. Don't go too far away though. We will be back in around uh, less than an hour's time for live coverage of the second of our quarterfinals today. That is Kerry against me. Thrown in at four o'clock. We'll start our broadcast around 3.45 but there is Dublin look to the future. It won't be happening for them this year. Derry are true to the All-Ireland semi-finals and the final score in the bottom left of your screen. Derry the winners by 13 points. It finished Derry 123, Dublin 110.